Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening. Not good night, though. Um, I'm really going to tell you something. Really? I am terrible at spelling. Are you really, really terrible at spelling in English, too? I am. Um, the reason why is because our pronunciation is completely different from how we write things and this makes a terrible problem especially if you're studying for very important tests like IELTS or any other written tests that you need for your school it is terrible but I have a method that I want to share with you and it's helped me pass the spelling it's helped me graduate university and it's helped me become your number one English teacher. I'm Ronnie and I'm going to teach you how to spell these terrible, awful words that I always spell wrong. But let's start with these. Um, I was looking on the internet. Do you know that place, the internet? And there's a list, 25, 50, 100 words that native English speakers spell wrong all the time. So don't, don't be discouraged if you think your spelling's terrible because you're learning a language, because guess what? Native speakers can't even spell it correctly. So pff, you're good, but watch my tips. So this is what I do. Um, and I'll tell you how I got this method. I look for words inside the words that help me remember to spell the words. Let me show you what I mean. We have this word, unfortunately. Now, even the pronunciation is weird. It looks like unfortunately. Unfortunately. And then we just come and say, unfortunately. <sighs> and then you have the job of trying to remember how to spell this word. So let's look at it. What words can you see inside the word? Okay, first of all, I see the prefix un. So in English, this means not. Okay, then I see for. Okay, I almost see, I almost see fortune. But there's no E, so that will really mess me up. But then I see the past tense of the verb to eat, eight. So I can remember un for. T U N eight Li. So I've got words inside, and this is the problem with native speak with native speakers when we try and write things, is we mix these up. We usually omit the E. Oh, we could put another vowel here instead of a U. So always look for words inside words. I had this problem in grade two. And I had a wonderful grade two teacher, Mrs. Zettel. I don't ever know what happened to her. Hi, if you're watching, thank you. Um, and when I was eight years old, I could not spell the word about properly. I probably spelt it uh, about, because mm -hmm. that's how it sounds. I remember my grade two teacher sitting me down at a little desk and saying, Ronnie, you are going to write this word about a hundred times. And for an eight-year-old, that's a lot. Even for a not eight-year-old, it's a lot. So I sat there with my pencil, and I probably spelt it wrong a hundred times. And she said, it's wrong. You got to do it again. <laughs> so I realized that there is a U. Why is there a U? Why don't you say the U? So it's about. So in my little seven-year-old brain, I thought, oh, no, 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 but there's an out. So I can remember it's A, B, C, D, E, F, out, ab, out. Wow. Then I proudly wrote it a hundred times and I showed my teacher and I was like, ha ha, I got it. I will always remember how to spell this word because I realized this pattern at age eight. I know, I was a genius. Now I use it, okay. So what word do you see in this or, or Combinations of words. I see again, oh, there's a double M here, but this is a prefix. So we're going to look at the beginning of the word and see these prefixes. Then we have mead. Hmm. 
okay. Oh, I get to eat something again. So immediately, uh, there's the I. Watch out for the I. Okay. So prefix mead I atli. Okay. This is getting fun. Can you see a word in this word? A problem we have in English is the double letters, right? But most of the time when you have a double letter, it's because it is a prefix, okay? So, when I look at this word, I see two P's and I say a parent. Oh, oh I see a parent in here. Okay. So, we have to remember that parent is in the word, but we also have to add an extra P before it. That'll nail the double P there. Apparently, I can spell this word now. <sighs> there's E's, there's I-E's, there's C's, there's lots of N's. Oh, this one's crazy. Convenience. Con, okay, con, good. Veen, no. Conven vein, no. I don't know, this one's hard. Venience. Mm. Yeah, just memorize this one because I don't have a technique. Convenience. There's a, a little rhyme we like to say. We say, I before E except after C. But there's so many exceptions to that rule that really doesn't work like that. But you can kind of remember, I before E except after C. But that means because there's a C and then it would be like this. So watch out for that one. Ignore the C there. So I E. What about this one? I always spell this like this. Separate. S E. See, I can't even do that. S E P E R A T E. Separate. No. 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 Apparently it's separate. So we go, excuse me, could you please separate this for me? Hmm. So in this word, I can see the word par. This is our problem area. So I remember separate. And then if you wanted to, you could hit another eight here. But as long as you get the A-R and not the E-R, you're okay. Oh, this word. So many vowels. What are you guys doing down here? And there's C's and S's. Watch this. I remember this guy like sci, like science. So I go, conscious, conscious. Oh, that's how you should spell it, conscious. And then, no, oh, there's a C. I remember the beginning of con, and then the science, and then us. Con, science, us, conscious. Good. This one's fun. I can see this in two ways. First of all, I can see city, spelt with an S instead of a C. And I also see, oh, Rio, which is the Portuguese and Spanish word for river. So I see a Rio in here. There's a river. I see curio which could be a fun word too as well. But so I think, oh, Riosity. And the problem lies within here, getting the I and the O in there. This one, oh God, it's another, it's another one with the E and the L-Y. Sometimes we put the E in, sometimes we don't. So I would look at this and go, Defin? Oh, no. Oh, look, look, look. There is the wonderful slang American spelling of the word night. So, defin and then itely. Definitely. If you say it like that, you remember it like that to spell it, but don't say it like that on the exam. Definitely. Just remember there's a knight in there. He's your knight in shining armor. This one. Look at this. So many of these guys have uh, double consonants, double letters. Oh, how are you going to do this? This one, we have Two R's because, again, this is a prefix. Look at, oh, my sister's here to help me. So, I am re -sis, sister, Tibble. Uh-oh. This is when we hit another mistake. Sometimes we have able. Sometimes we have able. So, to help you with this one, I would make a chart of the words like this. I would make words that end in able and words that end in able. If your pronunciation is up to speed, which means it's very good, you could even hear the difference in it. But if you don't know how to say it, the spelling's harder. Because we say irresistible, but we say available. 
So that actually makes sense, but you got to make sure your pronunciation is okay. This one, wow, 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 wow. There's, there's more vowels. So main, oh, 10, main 10, and then ends, maintenance, but we say maintenance. So I think of a main and then number 10, and then I just remember the ants part here. This word, oh, I know. Why do we have the A? Um, something's a veil. Able. Sometimes they're end in table, which is fun, but this one doesn't have a table inside. So you're going to just break this here. Avail. Able. Avail was a really good punk band, too, if you ever knew that one. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So a double consonants. Just remember, double, double, double C, double S. And I like the way that, that some people um, have learned the, the double consonants because I have learned to say A C C E S S I B L E, but some people say A double C double E double S. I'm like, wow, I like that. You can make a song. You'd be like, I got the next one. I got a C, and I got a double M, and I got a double what T, and I got a double E. Damn, we're doubling up on these. So if you can make little rhymes, double M, double T, double E, it's gonna help you. Cause I would write this committee. Committee, I'd write like this, committee. <laughs> so if something is irresistible, it means you cannot resist it. It means you need it like chocolate. If someone, put, hey, Ronnie, would you like some chocolate? I'm like, yeah, I do, I do, I, I, I do. I've eaten a hundred kilos of chocolate already, but I cannot resist the chocolate. I need it, I need it. Maintenance, we do this in a car. Um, if your car's old, it's not broken, but the mechanic likes you to bring it to them so they can charge you money to maintain your car. That means charge you extra money to keep your car in good running order. You maintain something, maintenance. Available means that you have free time or you can do something. Um, accessible, we have the word in it, access, but <laughs> you got to remember the doubles, okay? If something is accessible, it means it's easy to get to or easy to achieve. Committee is a group of people who like to give their opinion about things. Uh-oh, this one. Look at the double letters in this one. Embarrassing. And again, oh, there's a bar. Yay! I get to go to the bar with another R. So you can think of it as like in bar bar. Double R, A, double S. Okay, the doubles are like in this. This is um, two more examples. These are two more examples of remember the double L, don't remember the double L. It's your choice. I always put them in. Um, when we spell things like cancel or jewelry with a double L, it's British spelling. Um, apparently in America, they only put one L. In Canada, we definitely put two, but if you're writing your test and you only put one R, or sorry, one L, fight it because that is normal in American English, which I kind of think is cool because why do you need two? Well, because of the, the rule here, but it's cancel. La, la, la. No, just one. Go. Um, this is a fun rule that doesn't make sense, but I always say it because it's been nailed into my head since I was a little Ronnie. Achieve. Achieve means you win your goal, basically. Um, if you achieve something, we always say, okay, I before E. So this is the, the, the rule. You always put the I before the E. Okay, I before E. Okay, believe I before E. Good. So that's how we figure out that. But then they have exceptions. They say, except after a C letter. So if you have C, it's C-E-I. But, but, but there's a C here. But it has to be directly after the C. And then we have so many exceptions to this rule that when I was a kid, it was a good rule, but now I'm like, that rule's terrible. <sighs> but I still say it. And it might help you. Just be careful of those. I would make um, a little chart. And I would put all the guys that fit into this and expect, oh, that's wrong. see, 
I can't even spell this. Except, see? Huh. Ronnie, you're terrible at spelling. Okay. Except after C. So I would make a chart. All the ones that are nice and follow the rules and the rebels. The guys are like, pff, pff, I'm not following this I before E rule. So put them in a different category. Get them out of there. Leave it. Achieve, believe. These guys follow the rule. <sighs> this one. Disease. I always kind of try and type it. Dis, di, disease. Di, dis. I, I know there's an S somewhere. Disease. Disease. This ease. But then when you look at it, you see the word ease. Oh. Oh, oh, hey, wait, wait. Hey, that's easy. Like ease. Don't diss my easeness. So, disease. You can think of it like this, and then ease, like easy. This is not easy, okay? This, this took a lot of effort, and you really, really have to focus on your spelling when you're doing IELTS tests. Um, I am here to help you with your IELTS. If you pop onto my website, englishwithronnie.com, I have IELTS courses for you to take private lessons to help you with this test. If you're taking TOEFL or TOEIC, you have to be careful of your spelling. I'll help you with anything you need, but especially the spelling. So I want you to take these words that you hate and you always get wrong and to think of the little words inside. Hey, even if maybe it's in your language, <clears throat> it'll help you. Whatever language you want to do it in, please try and remember this with my Grade 7 method. Thanks, Miss Settle, Grade 2 teacher. I hope you're doing well.